my presentation right now on the screen, I assume. Awesome. Uh, and maybe we'll try to take some more time if everyone's comfortable with it to um, just make it more of a conversation and just ignore the animals running around my home. Uh, part of the COVID life is that I live in a zoo now. So let's start off here. And uh, I broke this down into a couple of different activities. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to start with a little icebreaker activity that I sort of came up with around doing environmental projects at schools. And you may be someone who has low engagement in these types of projects in the past, or you might be sort of a superstar that's been doing this for uh, 10 or 20 years and really just trying to look for that next big thing to do at school. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the Gaia project in general, um, the work we've done in schools in the last 10 years. We'll talk about um, our new methods of online delivery in schools. And then I want everyone to take some time, if they're comfortable, to share some stories about your own experiences uh, with these types of projects or other organizations that do environmental work. Um, and we'll make it sort of a, a discussion. All right, dog and cat fight, awesome. Um, so this is the game I sort of came up with. It's sort of like never have I ever, um, and you can feel, Feel free to just play on your own um, wherever you're watching this, or you can uh, sort of engage with the camera here. But the idea is that we're gonna put up four fingers and um, I'm gonna read out an action related to doing environmental work at schools. And if it's something you have not completed in your career teaching, then you'll put a finger down. And obviously whoever has the most fingers left at the end will win uh, a water bottle. And I think the reality is that everyone looks like the numbers that we have today. I think everyone's going to get a water bottle from today's activity. So, uh, but it should be fun just to see what kind of things people are doing at their schools. And um, let's get started with that. I just added another member here. Hello. All right. So here it is. Fold a finger if. Your school does not have an environmental based club. So, if at your school there's no green team, eco team, some sort of environmental club that does, uh, discusses these things or takes action in this way. Okay. What about if you've never taught about climate change with your students? Fold a finger. Fold a finger if your school does not celebrate Earth Day. What about if you've never brought an environmental educator to work with your students from Gaia Project or Ducks Unlimited, maybe um, NBEN or Nature NB? All right, so we're doing pretty good so far. What about if you've never attended an environmentally focused professional learning? I think because everyone's here today, that kind of Puts you off the hook for that one, so that's good. Um, if you've never facilitated an inquiry-based sustainability-focused project with your students, so now we're getting a little more specific. So if you've ran an inquiry-based project around sustainability, then you're good to go here. Doing good, Carolyn. Um, if your school does not have a garden for students to learn in, so it could be an indoor garden or an outdoor garden where students can actually do some learning. And what about if your school does not celebrate environmental projects on the school announcements? So that's sort of a way to get through to the whole school community if you're celebrating these activities on the announcements. Um, and I just, I put these together based on sort of our eco school certification guidelines. They sort of push our limits to our programs and things that we do in school. Um, I see a lot of people still have three fingers left, which is great. That's awesome. Um, and it'll be interesting to discuss later uh, a little bit about what things your schools might need to improve on, because there's always something um, every year that school can do a little bit better um, or in your practice teaching. So just a kind of a way to get you thinking about this stuff. And now I'll describe uh, a little bit about me and my background. Um, I'm the current acting interim executive director with the Gaia Project. Um, 
our current executive director is going to have a baby like today or any day now. I haven't gotten a text yet, but she's on maternity leave for the next number of months. And so I'm guiding the ship. Um, I completed my master's of education at UMB in 2018, focused a lot on working with elementary school teachers and um, their comfort level teaching science. So we uh, worked with teachers around New Brunswick and, and tried to build sort of inquiry-based learning kits for them and, and got their perspectives on it. And it was really, uh, it was an awesome experience. I was lucky there to work with uh, Dr. Ann Sherman, who's no longer with us, but she was an amazing mentor to me and sort of uh, showed me a lot of, of uh, what's go what goes on in the science education community and, and meeting people and, and got me definitely to where I am now. So it was a great experience um, working with curriculum. And obviously it's kind of paid off now where this is becoming a really valuable tool in developing resources and putting things together. So. Um, some personal stuff about me. I'm following the Toronto Raptors playoff run right now. I'm a big fan. I play bass in a local band here in Fredericton. And I'm a new owner of a Shih Tzu who's running around my house and making my life a little more difficult these days. But she's pretty cute. And that's a picture of six months old. She's pretty sweet. Um, so maybe because there's just a few of us here, if we want to take turns to uh, introduce ourselves. I think we probably have time to do something like that. Is, is that okay with everybody? Is everyone comfortable with that? And maybe I'll just pick someone randomly. I'll start, I think I'm gonna start with Carolyn because I know Carolyn, she's worked with Guy a lot. Uh, Thanks, Jeff. Uh, my name is Carolyn Barnhart. I've been teaching at Frederick, I teach at Frederick High School. I'm the department head and I teach environmental science. And uh, I changed the program about, oh geez, must be about 10 years ago because of Gaia. And now it's an inquiry-based course where the students are challenged to uh, solve an environmental problem. And that's what they have, 50% of their mark and 50% of the course is devoted to them uh, coming up with an idea, going through, uh, coming up with a problem. Um, solving a uh, strategy, collecting data, changing something, collecting new data, coming up with a presentation. I've gotten away completely from test quizzes and exam in this course. It's uh, about their presentation and their work. And um, I, I wouldn't be doing this uh, if it wasn't for the Gaia project, to be perfectly honest. So I highly recommend my learning. It uh, puts the kids in charge and uh, the depth of learning is uh, so much greater than what I could have done. I will say one thing, uh, I, we do a lot of technology and I don't know how to use any of the technology. Don't let that stop you from uh, getting involved in projects. The kids will, will f figure it out. Uh, so don't let your lack of uh, knowledge or comfort level with technology stop you from doing uh, awesome projects with the kids. Meet them where they are and give them that autonomy. That would be my recommendation. I see we've got a couple of new teachers here. That's my recommendation for you. Get out of your way, get out of the student's way, uh, and they will um, rise to the occasion. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, how about, I'm just going to pick someone random here. Let's go with Tara. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I, uh, I am currently a teacher at uh, Fundy High School. I'm a new teacher. I've uh, had uh, all sorts of different experiences throughout uh, my career. Sorry for the barking dog. Um, I guess my interest originally uh, came, I'm a, a certified teacher from Ontario. So my, uh, my kids had gone to a school um, 15, almost 20 years ago that uh, that was a, they had focused on being a gar garbage list school and a lot of focus was done on uh, improving their, their um, the schoolyard and they put gardens in and such. And so my interest when we came to New Brunswick was, uh, was kind of that same idea I did take when I did my teaching uh, certification um, early 2000s. I did a PD that was uh, um, improving your school schoolyards and school grounds and uh, so anyway, at Fundy, uh, um, 
Amy Cook has uh, has gotten into the uh, Guy project last year and uh, done all sorts of great things with our school. So I just was uh, the interest is there. That's great. Yes, I'm familiar with Amy. Um, how about Erin Flower? Good morning. Um, so I'm Erin Flower. I graduated from STU in 2013 and then I taught in China for a year and England for two years and then came back and I've just been doing, I had an e-contract. I'm high school math trained so um, did LTSs here and there and a year at OHS and this year I'm at Cambridge Narrows doing middle and high school math and science so I haven't ever done science before so I figured this like I don't really know much about any of this so I figured this was a good session for I'll have nothing to contribute but everything to learn <laughs> so I figured I'm sure they're a I know they're project based and um, I'm sure they have a good science kind of environmental just thinking of small school I'm not really sure what they have set up but um, I figured I should get to learn a little bit if I'm the six to ten science teacher so <laughs> I'm just gonna learn everything I can that's great. We're happy to have you. Um, how about, I see Amanda. Hi, I'm Amanda Gould. Um, I'm originally from Nova Scotia. So this past year was my first year teaching New Brunswick. Um, I was given a uh, grade four teaching job in Sunbury at, at Sunbury West this year. And I don't know, it's all kind of new. And um, I've taught some things about climate change, but I, I need some more resources. So I'm glad that, how do you pronounce it? Uh, what's your program called again? The Gaia Project. <laughs> Gaia Project. <laughs> I'm glad to hear about that. So I'm interested in it. That's great. My grandparents actually grew up or live in Fredericton Junction. So I'm very familiar with that uh, at school. Um, Megan. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, sorry about that. Yeah, so um, I'm new, but I've had a lot of life experience. I think it was Erin that said she lived overseas. I, I came to teaching after another career. And um, so while I don't have a lot of resources, like the way Amanda, Amanda and Erin, we should touch base and get each other's emails because I'm planning on co-teaching with these team sites as much as possible. And I've supply taught for 10 years. So I have a lot of mentors with content to share with you. Um, for example, a lot of friends of mine working on the master's have um, uh, sustainability projects that bridge the gap between social studies, but also the competencies in science. So I can be of use to some people, even though I'm new. Um, I've become really, I, while I'm not teaching grade six science before, I joined the, um, the uh, Willistaque and Wabanaki committee last year from ASDS, and we tried to work with uh, Mark Perry who um, is pretty passionate about the competencies and we were trying to, we were on something called the powwow committee. And um, so we were working really hard to focus on um, this year is the year of water and so I have a real passion for that and, and how to integrate First Nations education with everything I'm teaching in science. My background's art and history and so I'm gonna try to fuel those passions into this as well, but I'm a new mom. I can, yeah, I'll turn you around. You can see my babies. I have a whole wall here. So this is my house, and this is why, you know, I care about So I guess that just like a lot of you, if you're a mom or you just want to make a difference, or I think that's mostly why I'm trying to get into this field in general. But that's good for me. I don't think there's much more, but I would like to share with people after if that's possible. That's awesome. That's one of the great things about this kind of a platform is that all the teachers from across New Brunswick can meet each other and, and partner up. And in the past, we would have done something like this in, in person and it would have limited who could have attended. And it's mostly just a lot of teachers that already know each other. So that's one really positive thing about an experience like this. So yeah, feel free to share information with each other and uh, help each other through uh, the school year and these different projects. Let's go for Jessica. 
Uh, hello. Um, I am new to this. Uh, I taught intro to environmental science last year. I was replacing a teacher. Um, he did not return to our school. I'm from Hamilton, actually, I should say that too. I teach at Chigwell Senior High School. Um, and he did not return this year. And so, and I just got my B last year. And so they asked me to continue teaching it. Um, so I've just kind of trying to be, I, I've, I've been trying to teach or teach myself about all of this. Um, I did start a tower garden, which ended up not being successful because of COVID. It got unplugged by the custodians and everything died which was very sad. Um, but I do plan on doing that again this year and doing more. And when I read about this session, um, it just sounded really cool. I've never heard of the Gaia project before. And so I'm very interested to learn more. All right, thank you so much. Let's see who else we got, Peggy. Sorry, I joined late. I was coming from another session, so I'm I'm not sure what we're doing right now. Oh, sorry. We just weren't, we're introducing each. We have sort of a small group, so I figured everyone could kind of introduce themselves and where they teach. Okay. Well, I teach at Nackwick Middle School in Nackwick. The at the um, well, I already said middle school. Uh, grades six, seven, and eight, science and math. Um. I have a, a Bachelor of Science in Forestry, a degree from many, many, many years ago. And um, while teaching grade eight science, I've, I've attended um, Atlantic Teacher Tours. And uh, because of my experience in forestry, I'd like to bring or develop a forestry program in my grade eight science. and. Uh, certainly look at the impact of climate change on on a natural resource such as that and um, I'm just hoping that I can pick up a lot more from Gaia. We've worked with Gaia in the past when we were doing a, it was a grade six program for use of power consumption in the building. Anyway it was it was a lot of fun so I'm just hoping I can learn some some new things to make use of in class. That's awesome. Thanks, Peggy. And I suppose you have the Meduxin and Keg River Association there in, in your region as well. And I know they're a great resource. Um, we do. And yeah. it's a beautiful, beautiful place to visit. You know, looked out. All right, let's go to uh, Marie. Hi, um, so my name's, my name's Marie Olson. I'm actually in a unique position where I'm not a teacher and have no teaching experience. I'm the experiential learning coordinator for Anglophone West. So I started this role in March, right as COVID hit. So I'm just still kind of sorting out um, my role and, and learning about the resources available throughout the district. So. I will be supporting teachers um, who teach grades six to 12 um, with experiential learning across the district. And so I'm just excited to hear about what resources are available and what options. Um, I have a feeling I will be reaching out to a few of you after this. I've been kind of taking notes and, and seeing who um, might be interested in doing experiential learning. So that's me. That's a great perspective to have in this conversation. Glad to have you. Um, Lori, I see you're here. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Um, I'm Lori Tingley from Salem Elementary in Sackville. And last year I taught um, a combined grade one, two. This year coming up, um, I'm actually on education leave for the first four months at UMB doing my uh, MED. So I'm not quite sure who is in yet for me for those four, first four months, but it will be a kindergarten grade one combined class when I do go back. And I know, uh, Jeff, you were a huge help to me last year getting, getting going on um, all climate change activities. And uh, my students really thrived on having outdoor learning time and uh, all the little mini projects that we did. So thank you. And I hope, I hope when I come back in January that uh, I can keep on rolling with, with whatever I started. 
Uh, congrats on the Masters. That's awesome news. Thanks. Um, how about Sarah? Morning. Morning. Um, I'm Sarah Francoeur, and I teach grade 11 physical geography at Southern Victoria High School. 11, 12, I guess. Um, I am not a science major. <laughs> I majored in English and history and graduated with that. And then I have a music education degree. So any science um, thing that I can, knowledge that I can acquire helps me because I learn something new every single year I teach the same course. I do not pride myself on being a science person. I love science. I just, I'm more of an English person. So uh, I try to acquire as much knowledge as possible. Very good. Thank you, Sarah. And Catherine from the Gaia Project, you're here as well. Yes, hi. So uh, my name is Catherine. I'm working with Jeff, actually. I'm on the French side, mostly. I've been, uh, the, the name might have changed, but it's a program delivery officer. Um, so I've been in many French school this year, teaching about climate change and climate action. Uh, my background, actually, I've been studying in education in French and history. Then I switched to forestry, and then I switched to business. So it's... <laughs> My background is it really mixed from everything I liked and I finished my marketing uh, degree in Finland studying bioeconomy and um, sustainable development. So all of that brought me to the Gaia project when I can like where I can work uh, all my passion together. So that's me. Thank you. Catherine's a superstar for us. She got to a ton of schools all across New Brunswick last year and it's interesting to hear everyone's different backgrounds and uh, sort of expertise. And the great thing about teaching climate change is it really does relate to every part of human life, um, not just sort of the scientific side of things, but a lot on the social side of things and art and expression and language. So um, there's a lot to uh, a lot to cover today, but I think it's good for us to all sort of contribute. So at any point, feel free to turn off your mute button and and ask a question or make a comment or suggestion because uh, we do have kind of a smaller group so we're afforded the, the opportunity to do that. All right, let me get back to this presentation. So here's some basic stuff about, oh, we've got another person joining here. Okay, um, about the Gaia Project. So we really do put the focus on education in our organization. Um, typically a lot of ENGO groups will sort of focus on the environment first and, and be an environmental group. Um, we are an environmental organization focusing on sustainability and energy efficiency, but our main key uh, area of focus is in education and trying to make sure that our staff are, are well-versed and well-trained on everything that's going on in, in uh, the, the theoretical word, world of education and sort of the, you know, whatever the Department of Education thinks is uh, a priority for our province, is, that's what we adopt whether it is the sustainable development goals or the global competencies, um, all this sort of terminology that uh, seems to change month to month and year to year. Um, and we started in 2009. So it's been just over 10 years now that we've been working across New Brunswick in French and English schools. Um, here we go. So our reach last year was one of our best years. We got 550 programs delivered before the school closures, which was pretty strong. You can see just some of the schools marked here on this map that we travel to. So we get up north, we're, we're through the south, we're in the mountain region up in Edmondson. Um, and so we, we do get to all seven school districts in French and English. Um, we were over 10,000 students before COVID, which was really exciting. And I was, I think we were all looking forward to seeing how far we could have gone if, if the closures didn't happen and the pandemic didn't happen. But uh, this is life and we obviously have adapted and, and changed and shifted from, from that time. But um, also 160 teachers receiving PL, um, whether that be like a school calling us in to work with their teachers um, 
or working with pre-service teachers at UMB or Stu. Um, we try to be flexible about what we offer teachers. Um, we know that sometimes we might just get an hour, sometimes we might get something like this, and sometimes we'll get a full day. So we, we're sort of adapted to what we do when we work with teachers, because I think, personally, I think that's the most important um, way to increase our capacity. This is our team, and we have just hired a new member starting on Monday to work in the Francophone sector. Um, she is a former teacher, and I think she's gonna be a star for us too. So we're always trying to add more folks to our team and talent that have sort of that education background. Um, and here's just sort of a little glimpse of everybody. This is Lizzie. She is our executive director that's on maternity leave. And uh, this is her with a film project we did last year to celebrate our 10 year anniversary. Um, she's really sort of the vision as far as, uh, you know, our mandate and our communications and everything. Um, this is Jimmy, who's been around for nearly 10 years. Um, he is, in my opinion, the, one of the best informal educators in the province. He uh, He's a, someone that if you can get into your classroom, um, there's no one better at going up there and, and talking about this stuff. He knows it like the back of his hand and uh, the, the students just love him. So this is me working with some pre-service teachers at UMB. So I do typically work in a lot of the professional learning programs that we do working with teachers. Um, Jane is also amazing working in the classroom. She's doing a trash tracker program here, sorting waste with students. Um, she's also learning a lot about the communications of our work. We've been shifting a lot of energy and allocated funds to communications with videos and websites and everything that we need to really get up to speed and make more accessible for what's going on in the world right now. Um, Brittany's been around for about a year and her expertise is in waste, waste management. Um, she's been a great asset to our team. She works a lot with K-8 to eight schools in the Anglophone sector. Catherine, who you heard from earlier, she's been a superstar for us on the Francophone side. Um, got to a ton of schools last year and has added a lot of uh, creative dynamics to our team. And Ainsley is our special projects coordinator and she does a little bit of everything. She just is always looking for a new project or a new thing to work on and also delivering programs to schools as well. So that's our team right now. Um, we have this little video. I think I'm gonna skip it. I was gonna show it just a little animated promo video, but uh, you'll be able to find that on social media. Um, in the next couple of weeks, we start doing recruitment and trying to sign up teachers for our programs. Um, and I, I would suggest, I would highly recommend, uh, especially Jane would recommend that you check out our Facebook page, our Twitter, um, and just to keep updated on what we're doing and, and changes that we make. Um, so this is sort of our traditional offering of programs. We have elementary, middle school, and high school programs available. Um, the elementary schools, we do a trash tracker program, which is a waste audit, meaning that we go through the school's trash and sort through the different categories of, you know, plastics, papers, refundables, milk cartons, um, compostable, organic material, and just get the students thinking about what they're throwing in the garbage and where maybe it could be going or it should be going, and then get to a higher level questioning of the systems in the community about why these things aren't being recycled at the school. And, uh, it's been around for a number of years and we've gained sort of national media attention on this program. Um, and it's something that I think uh, with what we planned for this next year, I'll get into later, it, it's gonna be the next level of a, a real student led and inquiry based project that's sort of laid out in a cookie cutter way that you can follow. And we've got all the resources ready and the videos and everything. So really excited about that. <clears throat> Our energy offering at elementary school is called Energy Engineers. And it's been, last year we, we were going to schools and delivering the program. It was really successful, sort of a one day awareness based program to talk about how communities make decisions around so using solar energy or wind energy or fossil fuels. And it was good to get the students sort of thinking about this stuff that normally, you know, it's an invisible force in your home or in your school that you don't really see with electricity. So um, that one was really successful last year and this year we've transformed it into sort of a learning package, which I'll get to later. Uh, middle school, we do um, an energy detectives program where we do an energy audit. So 
We're measuring how much energy your appliances use at school, whether it's a stove or a fridge or it's a computer or a printer. Um, students can collect data and find out how much electricity these things use and then look at ways to sort of um, save energy around the school. And then our high school offering, the sustainability in action, it's, it's a lot more student-led and open um, for students to decide, uh, sort of like what Carolyn had mentioned earlier, she sort of adapted it and made it her own unit now, uh, which is amazing. And um, students really do have the ability to sort of guide their own projects. Um, we typically find it's interesting too that a lot of the students that normally would be sort of maybe causing trouble or just not engaged, they're the ones that really take to these projects and uh, get invested. Whereas sort of the students that enjoy the tests and, and the rigorous kind of like normal school routine, they sort of get lost a little bit in this project because it is so open and um, it allows a lot of opportunity for, for student leadership. So those are a traditional offering, but everything's changed. So um, we know that our website's becoming a more powerful tool. So we're trying to make it really adaptable and accessible for teachers to sign up and also for us to get the information we need to report to our funders um, because we are a not-for-profit. All of these programs are funded by some uh, provincial government or uh, corporation or federal grant. Um, there's a lot of different ways that we receive money and uh, fund these programs and so um, we need to collect the data about how many students we're getting to and how many schools and um, so that's becoming more important and our website will be uh, brand new in September for recruitment time. Um, and there's also a lot of new sort of methods to reach teachers with what's going on. Um, it's not boots on the ground anymore. It's not, you know, marching to the schools and knocking on the door because unfortunately I don't think they're going to answer the door <laughs> in the school year. Uh, so, oh, um, so we sort of grouped our offerings into these different categories. We have learning packages that sort of include videos, worksheets, all in one PDF resource with clickable links, um, trying to make it really easy to use and access. They can just download right on our website. And then we have our traditional project base where our staff will actually work close with you to co-facilitate these programs, whether it's at elementary, middle school, or high, and um, help you um, sort of guide these in inquiry-based investigations that aren't just like a one-day, one-off kind of deal. They're really, uh, they do take some more time to, for students to explore and, and look in depth at these topics. And then we have sort of like do-it-yourself offerings, like posters that we can uh, mail to your school or you can download if you want. And um, I'll talk a little more about that later. Um, and then professional learning, kind of like today. Eco Schools is another uh, program we adopted last year. It's a nationwide certification model to give schools recognition about the work that they do, whether it's a school greenhouse or an energy efficiency pro project, doing something with Gaia. Um, we want schools to be recognized for that. And we also wanna push ourselves about the way that we celebrate these programs or the way we assess them, um, the way we share them to the school community. Um, it's a great program for that. Um, it really makes you step back and think about your eco team or your green team and how you can take it to the next level. Um, so we're gonna work on uh, the schools that we deliver these programs to, whether it's a waste audit or an energy audit or a sustainability project, we want that to be linked to the certification so that you can get recognition for doing this hard work. And um, they also have a lot of great resources and webinars and things that will help you in your profession as well. All right, so coming back to grade three to five, elementary school track tracker, this is a little more detail and I won't go super into it. If it's something you're interested in, I would recommend emailing me after this to, to get signed up because it's one of those programs we only have a limited capacity. I think we're gonna run 28 uh, trash trackers this whole school year. So probably about 14 in the first term and 14 in the second term, but you gotta sign up quick because uh, it's a limited capacity. Um, the big highlight this year is we've allocated some of the money that we would typically spend at traveling and driving around the province and we put it towards these school improvement grants. So it's a five day investigation where students are uh, asking questions like driving questions and guiding questions. They're gaining knowledge and information that we put together in presentations and books that we're going to send to your school and then they're doing a waste audit 
And again, we have all the equipment in a box ready to send to your school. All you have to do is watch the guide video and, and conduct the activity with your students. Um, there's a reflection time for students to think about how it affects them personally and their family. And then school improvement is the final part of this project. So all you need to do is pick a category. Maybe you want a vermite compost in your school. Maybe you want a new set of sorting bins or you want to pay to have something collected. There's a bunch of different ways you can use the money. All you have to do is write a short one page grant application and then boom, $500 from the guy project to make that a reality. And maybe you want to just have like an event or a party with your class, like that's an option too. So um, we're hoping that, that teachers will, will access this and uh, we can really help make changes in school communities. And it's all free. Um, here's some examples of the resources. It's our project guide and rubric, a um, picture of some of our old trash tracker programs over the last number of years. It's definitely something that students are engaged with and ask a lot of interesting questions. Um, it's just a matter of turning those questions into like a, a real change in the school, which can be really empowering for the student. Um, Energy Engineers is more of a learning package that's, we're not so involved in our side. Um, you can download the package for free and then do what we want with it. There's videos and there's worksheets and recommendations and tests and things, but um, it's really yours to make it your own. Um, and the whole point is just to gain awareness about electricity generation, use, and sort of how valuable it is in our province, uh, the assets that we do have around electricity, um, and understand the environmental impacts too of building a dam or uh, burning fossil fuels and, and these types of things. Um, and here's some examples of those, uh, that package. Uh, in middle school, we have the Energy Detectives Program. It's sort of tried, tested, and true. Um, it's one that we sort of have down to a science. And now the goal is to make it, uh, make it possible for the teachers to, to facilitate this activity, sending the equipment and the worksheets and the presentations in a pa pretty package so that you can facilitate this with your students. And the big thing is just to learn how to use that tool. You can see the student holding there, which is an energy monitor. Um, you, you plug it into the wall and then plug in whatever appliance you're, you're measuring and it collects all the data for you to show you how much energy is being used and how much money you would save or you are spending really and then you can turn that into savings after and talk about that with your students. Um, so it's, it's pretty popular for us uh, in middle schools and one that we're happy I think we'll have about 30 of these programs this year so again if you're interested, it's best to sign up earlier than later. And here's a couple of examples of students measure, measuring energy around their school, um, filling out the worksheets, a lot of math involved in this one. I think it's a good sort of a math course, science course. Um, that's sort of the focus of this one. And then we have our sustainability in action, which is more uh, open. And we've really worked this hard this summer to uh, film these topic videos. Uh, we spend a lot of money just getting these video guides and um, sort of things to engage and drive the students to think about how it connects to climate change and how it connects to um, their community, whether it's around food security here in New Brunswick or transportation in our province. Um, there's all these different topics that students can choose from. And then they spend the next, it's really up to you how much time you wanna spend on this project, but typically about four to five weeks, they work to collect data and prepare a presentation that they can share with their school. Over the years, we've seen students really take it to the next level and make the huge changes in their school that they sort of dream about um, or move into university and continue to study these same topics. So it's, uh, it's something that some students really take to and some of them get a little bit uh, hesitant about because it is a little bit more open and not structured. And as a teacher, sometimes it can be a little bit difficult maybe to, to uh, get out of your comfort zone and, um, you know, get out of the textbook. But um, as Carolyn mentioned earlier, it's at the end of the day, it really can be more impactful and memorable for students to, to do these types of projects. So yeah, if this is something you're interested in, again, reach out. We've done it in math classes. We've done it in uh, world issues classes, environmental science, regular science. Um, we've, we've done this program in a number of different courses. It's just a matter of, the teacher 
um, wanting to try a project instead of like the traditional kind of testing and textbook kind of activities. Um, a lot of equipment that we use, we have guide videos to how to use it and we'll send it all to your school. You'll always have contact with one of our team members to, to ask questions or to help co-facilitate um, virtually as well. Um, here's an example. I'll make this bring up this one example of a tool that we use because there's so much now on the internet and I have to change my share here one second. There we go. All right, hopefully you can see this. It says in roots beta. Can everyone see this? Um, it's sort of a simulation chart and it shows students um, the changes that can happen. I'm just gonna move this here. Um, it shows the changes that can happen over the next into uh, the year 2100 um, if things don't change and we just keep what we're doing. Um, and there's obviously a very unsustainable shift in te global temperatures. So they're actually able to sort of play around with, well, what if renewable energies become more prevalent and they can see sort of it charted right in front of them. Um, you know, what if we invest in, in more energy efficiency? What if we electrify all of our cars? How much will that help? And they can really see sort of the status um, that we're in right now and like how much changes and what kind of changes are necessary to really help like the population. What if the population grows tremendously? You can see how that will be harmful. Um, so it's a really interesting way to play with the variables and find out what actual changes need to happen for climate change mitigation um, to actually take place. So it's kind of a cool, one of the cool tools that we use. Um, let me get back into this here. All right. All right, cool. I think everyone can see the PowerPoint now, hopefully. All right, so here's some of the schools we've worked in. Hampton High School, Bathurst, Fairton High, Carlton North. These are schools that have really worked with us year over year. It's sort of a bit of a challenge that we face actually that a lot of um, the same teachers and same schools will call us back year to year. So it's great for those schools because they can continue those projects and really help them flourish and give students a lot of autonomy and, and empowerment. But um, sometimes it limits us because it's another program that we only can do a certain number of each year. And uh, we really do always want to start uh, a new relationship in a new school in a new part of the province. So um, hopefully this year we'll, we'll get that opportunity as well. Some of our other resources, we have this, uh, this is really one of those do-it-yourself ones. It's a 50 classroom climate action poster. Um, it's sort of like a scratch as you go poster and we're just waiting for the prints to come in so we can ship them around to schools, but it's something you can sign up for on our website for free and we will ship it to your school or drop it off. Um, it, it allows students to choose a different category around sustainability whether it's food or waste, water, land, energy. And it sort of lays out a bunch of activities that are some just low engagement and some of them are like school-wide projects and things. Okay. So the students can sort of choose something they want to investigate or put into place at the school and they can see the tangible, you know, on paper right in front of them, the impact that they're actually having. So hopefully it can reduce that eco-anxiety that students face and that adults face too around you know feeling helpless in this kind of a, a world and with what's happening with climate change and with COVID-19 this is something that shows a lot of actions that you can take in your classroom and sort of make a difference um, and so we're really excited about that one it's kind of like one of those posters you might have seen like watch these 50 movies or do these 50 different date ideas and you scratch them while you do them well it's that kind of a uh, an idea around climate change so we're excited about that one um, and then we have our professional learning and this is something that we tailor to uh, whatever group we're in front of really. So whether it's something like this where we have an hour or it's something like we go to uh, 
a full day at a school sometimes where we'll, we'll actually get to work with the teachers and uh, the administration can bring us in. Um, so we sort of adapt to the audience that we have and there's always a lot to talk about about when it comes to climate change. So um, that's sort of what we do with professional learning. So there we go. Now we can take some time to sort of uh, have a conversation about sustainability projects, maybe questions you might have from this. And um, there's not too many of us, so we should be able to kind of uh, mediate a conversation. Uh, does anyone have anything off the top of their, who wants to be first, I guess is what I'm saying. <laughs> Can I ask a question? Can you hear me okay? Sorry, I'll start a video. Yeah, sorry. Try to be yeah. human being here. Okay, so I am really new and I'm trying to make sense of all the modules. I know um, I'm at QMS Middle School this year. So before I go and um, look into whether or not you can come, do you know if you've been to that school before? Is it redundant? Is it a lot to ask you to come back? QMS is... Chris Kansas Middle School. Yeah. So we do, we have a, a program delivery officer in that area that's outside St. John, right? Yes. Yep. Yeah. So Jane, she's uh, been to a lot of schools down there. It, honestly, that Quizpam SIS doesn't ring a bell in my mind as far as one that we're, um, you know, year, year over year in. It, okay. Usually what, what happens for us is we have like, uh, we have sort of these champion teachers in some schools around New Brunswick that really are passionate about this kind of work and, um, giving back to the environment and leading these types of projects. So those are one, the ones that we have the good relationships with. Um, but if there's ever a school like maybe Quiz Pam, and I can ask Jane and find out if that's one we've been into and we worked in um, that we haven't been to, yeah. um, we're always happy to start that relationship and start wherever the comfort level of the school is because it might just be an introductory type of like, um, you know, unfortunately this year we can't go to the school Right. Um, Are you doing cool. virtual sessions at all, Jeff? Just because I know some, is that what it would look like? So uh, what grade, you're talking about middle school? Six, six right. science. So yeah. if you if you had signed up for the energy detectives program, what would happen is um, you'd be assigned to one of our program delivery officers. Um, yeah. So for example, it might be Brittany. And yeah. Brittany would send you an email and then set up a call like this with you to say, Thanks for signing up. Here's kind of the details about how to run the program. Uh, here's okay. the cur curriculum connections. We would send you like the learning package that has all the resources in it and presentations are all pre-made. Yep. Um, the worksheets are all printable and everything. And then we would actually mail you the equipment too. So like the energy monitors that students use, we would send those to the school. And if you ever had any, if you ran into something in the presentations or the worksheets or the equipment that you were like, I'm not sure about this, there would always be someone that you could call um, to talk about it. And then we're hoping we just, we haven't completely committed to this yet because we need to test it first, but yeah. to do like virtual classroom visits where we can actually right. talk with students, like student facing kind of situations. Right. Um, we're going to, we're going to pilot it in a few schools, but we just can't commit right. to it. We know all the ins and outs about like what's going to be, uh, you know, Possibly. what's going to be accessible for us to do that yeah. um i'm thinking okay. it'll probably work out it's just going to take a little bit of testing first before we just dive in okay but that is the goal to kind of like be more involved with the class and, and student facing because that's what we do that's you know okay i do have a quick question just because while you were chatting i wanted to find links and make sure i didn't put this off when i get to your um climate quest grade 8 resources is that different than the type climate detectives um just because i'm looking to Kind of contact to make sure i know where to find all your documents but yes, if i'm on yes. your website is it is it a, is there two separate sessions sections for middle school just because um one seems to be climate quest grade six eight resources and that looks like it's the posters um and you have french and english options but i just didn't see um how to order those if that was in the link itself or a separate email for someone so the climate quest was something that we did in april right after the school closures. Um, okay. What we did is each one of our team members um, was assigned to a day. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, there was a different theme around yeah. climate change. And we either, you know, it might be a video that will happen one day or an activity at home. Um, and so we sort of like packaged that up into um, like all the grade six to eight activities are in one package in English and French. And okay. 
that's something that's free on our website. Um, the thing with our website right now is that uh, we have uh, a group working on it, like our revised version that I kind of previewed. Um, that's not, it's not completely launched yet, the one that we're going to have for all of our forms and everything. Okay. So we're not officially in recruitment for our website right now, but if you email okay. me after the session, okay. I can make sure you get all the links you need to download everything that you want for that. Okay, that's what I'll do. I appreciate that. Perfect. Okay, I'm done. Sorry, sorry to take no over there. Okay. Jeff, it's Peggy here. Um, I'm just wondering, the high school program that you have, hi, on, on roads, climate interactive, is it possible to use that as well for grade eight students? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Um, we don't typically do run our full sustainability and action program in middle schools just because of the capacity that we have and our agreements, like our funder agreements, are specific to nine to 12 classrooms for that project. But any of the resources that we share, um, yeah, you can absolutely use them with grade eights. It's not that they're not capable, it's just uh, sort of restrictions we have in our organization around funder agreements and things like that. But I can share that link with you if, that, if you're interested in that resource. Absolutely. And, and so at some point in the 2021 school year, if things change, would it be possible to get someone to come to the school um, that I could sit down, work with, try to figure out the best way to, uh, to run the program with a grade 8 class? Yeah, and there's a few things that we can do. Um, I mean, fingers are crossed. We sort of made a decision early on that let's not risk it. Let's just make everything online because we, if we can't put all our eggs in the fact that maybe we'll be allowed to go to schools this year. Um, but hopefully if things do go well, which it doesn't look like they will, but they might, um, maybe in the winter term the, the restrictions will be different and we will be, uh, you know, able to just come to the school as an outsider and um, it won't be a risk. I mean, because we travel so many different places in New Brunswick, uh, it's such a risk for us to be the vector that's spreading this virus from school to school across the province. We don't want to, we don't want to be that person in education. So um, I think we'll just have to wait and see how things go. But if your specific school and you can convince sort of your administration that this is something that's important, um, important enough for like someone on our team to come to the school and do sort of a PL type sit down thing um, with a small group of teachers, that could also be uh, uh, very much an option if that's something that will help, um, you know, get these projects rolling. We're always open to doing that. Okay, that sounds great. And I have one other question. Uh, when you were talking about one of your instructors who works with French schools, is that the same person that would work with students who are involved in French immersion programs? Or are you talking specifically the Francophone school district? No, we our, our uh, program delivery officers, we have some that are strictly Anglophone and our Francophone delivery officers, um, they would be the ones that would come to do the, uh, any kind of a French immersion program with your students. But we do. Okay. We just we have Thank a very you. we have a very high presence in the francophone community. So, um, like last year, I think over half of our deliverables were actually in the francophone school districts. Um, so I think that's part of the reason I maybe phrased it that way. But that's a good question. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Jeff, I'm just wondering, um, kind of like Megan's question, have you guys been to Cambridge Narrows? Do you know? Yes, we've definitely been to Cambridge Narrows. Okay. Yeah. okay. Um, we ran a sustainability in action last year at Cambridge Narrows, I'm pretty sure. Um, does that, that school has a compost program? I don't know. Oh. I would assume, like, they're, they're pretty in the country, like. Yeah. I, I think from what I remember that I've, I, uh, I've worked with a teacher from there. I can't exactly remember her name, um, but we've also ran a few programs there. And I think they were one of the schools that sort of had a pretty good stance 
as far as like having a compost program and um, some other like a lot of the rural schools usually have a pretty good community presence yeah. um, with supporters that come in and help set things up or um, help the students lead these projects so uh, yeah okay no good to know thank you If there's any more questions, I'm happy to answer them. And if also, if you want to email me, um, I'm totally fine with that and, and fielding any questions you have or setting you up or getting you signed up for our programs. Um, and then obviously, water bottle too, if you're interested, we'll, we'll bring you and send you a water bottle because, uh, you know, really valuable time here today. And I, I really, I respect everybody for signing up for a session like this. Um, we really want to celebrate the work that you do and sort of diving into these types of projects. It really does make an impact for the students and the way they navigate the world. Um, but anyways, does there, everyone has my email correct or no? Maybe I can put it up really quick here just on the slide. One sec. And yeah, just send me an email if you need anything. But thank you so much for coming today, everybody. Appreciate it. There it is. Um, Jeff, I have a quick question. Sure. A lot of the links and information in that PowerPoint, some of the presenters emailed us the PowerPoints. Are, are you sending that to us, Jeff, just for those? I'm specifically looking for that really interactive um, energy, what was it, the, with all the graphs and charts, and it was interactive for the students. I just wondered if there's a link to that in your PowerPoint, if we're being sent I that. can 